right. Well, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alex. I'm going to be hanging out with you here for a little bit today. Now, what we're going over here is uh, kind of the third in a three-part series on how to use Applos Accounting and really any accounting software uh, that you need to use. So any accounting software really boils down to three main uh, functions or categories. The first is to set up your accounts, which we have a webinar on as well. So if you need to learn how to set up your accounts in Applos, that is where we recommend you start. So feel free to check that out. Once you have your accounts set up, you now use those accounts in transactions, which is the second part. And then the third part is being able to pull reports or run information based on the accounts and transactions that you have set up. And that's really what any accounting software boils down to. Accounts, transactions, reports. So let's take a look at reports here in Applos. When you have Applos accounting turned on, you have a number of reports available to you. And so let's go through each one and I'll, I'll kind of tell you at a high level what each one uh, does and then uh, show you how to customize them a little bit. Now, at a very high level, a report is the answer to a question. So as you get started, people are going to ask you questions like, or you might even ask yourself these questions like, how much money do I have? Or how much money have I spent this year? How much money have I received through contributions? How much money have I spent on office supplies in the past year? How many times have we paid this person? Have we done a bank reconciliation? How many times, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. All those questions are going to be answered by reports. So it's very important to have a robust reporting uh, section in whatever accounting software you want to use. Now we've boiled that down into kind of some main categories of reports, which are these you know, little quadrants here that if you were to click on one, that'll take you to the report where you can customize it. Uh, or we also have a, some shortcuts here. So within each little quadrant, we have some shortcuts that will uh, kind of take you some, to some pre-formatted reports if you're curious. Um, but overall, the income statement is the first one here. And the income statement shows your income and your expenses. Now, this does more than just show you. It, it, what it does is it shows you within a certain date range how much money have you received in all your different income categories and then how much money have you spent in all your expense categories and then what's left over. What is the net income or loss for the amount of time that you're looking at? So let's go ahead and take a look. So here's your income statement. Now, your income statement uh, by default is going to be pretty generic. It shows your income accounts right there. So here's my $3,000 that I've made. And then here's all my expenses. So all my expenses, all the different categories, I've spent $2,620. So that means I have a net income or uh, possibly a loss of $380. So there we go. So I have a net gain within the time frame, uh, first of the year till today, of $380. So that's a real basic income statement. Now this can be customized in a lot of different ways. So one way is you can customize the date range. So if I wanted to look all the way back to 2014 uh, for the 2014 year, I can, and then I would hit update and that would update the uh, uh, details there. You can also add your logo to the screen here. And then using the little orange plus button, you can add columns to this report. Now the columns add a lot of important information for you. And on the income statement, this looks like some account details here, like your account group, account type, which you may or may not need, but you have the last year's actuals as well. And then you have your funds, and this is where it becomes very, very cool. So I can see not only how much money have I received and spent within you know, this year, but I can see it broken down per fund that I have set up for my organization. So I'll show you that. So we've added those. So let's say, uh, so here's my 3,000. Now all of my income here was in my missions fund. Okay, so general fund had zero income, so did building fund. If I scroll down, all of my expenses were in my general fund. So that means that overall, I had a net gain of $380. But if I'm looking at a per fund kind of division here, the emissions fund gained a lot of money and didn't have any expenses, whereas the general fund had a lot of expenses and no income. So it could be helpful to see the fund breakdown. Something else that you can do here is on the right-hand side menu, you have these report modifiers which is where you can get rid of zero balances. So it kind of truncates the report to just what has a balance in it. You can also show inactive reports. You can subtotal by group. And then you can also show fund balances, which is neat. So fund balances shows you at the beginning of this period, you had a beginning fund balance of this. Now I have just started this account as of this year. So this doesn't show anything, but if you had say a, a 2014 ending balance, that would show that there. 
And then you have other fund balance movements, which includes any transaction that does not uh, use an income account or an expense account, but that impacts your fund balance. So for instance, if you had a starting balance or if you did transfers between funds, all that kind of stuff shows up as another fund balance movement. And then you have your net income and then ending fund balance. So the reason this is important is because this, these values right here are what actually lines up with your balance sheet report, which we're going to take a look at here in a minute. So anyway, if you're curious, use that fund balance thing there. That helps. Uh, you can also change the accounting basis here between accrual and cash. And then there's some other report formats for you as well. Uh, some other last uh, things that you can do on any report is uh, enter a report name. So my cool report. I can enter a report name and save it. So what that does is it saves this report format so that you can click on that at any given time and get back to this report. Um, you can also export this into a XLSX, XLS, or CSV format, all kind of Excel formats if you want to put them into there. You can also print this report if you'd like. Okay, so that's an income statement. Uh, looking at another report here is your balance sheet, and a balance sheet shows you your assets, liabilities, and equity. The accounting equation, okay, is assets equal liabilities plus equity, which basically means everything that you own as an organization equals the amount of debt that you have and then what you are kind of worth after that. Uh, another way to put it is your assets minus your liabilities equal your equity. I don't know why it's uh, the other way around, but that's the same. So this shows you, here's my total assets. Here's $16,680. So that is my total assets between my checking and my savings accounts here. I owe $800, which means that my total equity, the amount of money that I am worth, is my assets minus my liabilities, which is $15,880. So this report can also be customized with other columns here. So if I wanted to see a balance sheet per fund, I can do that as well. You can also change the report modifiers here or the date range. So any report is going to follow that kind of generic format where you have a kind of template that you can add columns to, you can export it, you can modify it. Um, so there you go. So here's, here's some other reports that we've got for you. One is the account list, which shows you your... Uh, list of accounts. Here's your chart of accounts, and you can add other information for it there. You can also add in the debits and credits. So if you need to see like a trial balance report, you can see that here as well. You also have transaction details, and transaction details is cool when you are trying to do some research on uh, an account or some transactions that have been entered. So this shows you uh, not only how many transactions have en been entered for each account, but you can also click on any one of these amounts and it'll take you to that actual transaction. So there's that. Uh, and then anytime you do that, if you ever navigate away from a report by clicking on a number, there's this little history button up here that if you click go, it'll take you back to that specific report. So some other stuff that you can do here in transaction details, again, is uh, add columns here. So if I wanted to add more information, I can. Uh, I can also use the filters up here at the top, which is kind of new. Uh, to the reports that we've seen so far, and I can filter by a certain account, group, or fund. So for instance, if I wanted to see all transactions that have hit my missions fund, I would do that. So select that fund, click update, and then that now uh, changes the report to show me only transactions that have impacted my missions fund. Uh, along the same lines, if I wanted to do something that is uh, only for my checking account, I just want to see transactions in my checking account. Nothing else, no expenses, no nothing. I would select my checking account, click update. So then now per date range, here's all the transactions that have impacted my checking account. All right? And you can also do the fund balance thing here too as well if you'd like. And then export and print and whatever else you need to do. Uh, some other reports here is we have income by person or company. So this is where you can generate contribution statements too if you're using Aplos donations. And then expense by payee. So at a very high level, it just kind of shows you the total income and or expense per person that you've recorded. Uh, we also have the contact list. So a lot of our customers ask, how can I get a list of my contacts and their addresses and all that kind of stuff? This is how you do it. Go to the contact list report. You can filter by any information you want here. Uh, but for the most part, you can just use this orange plus button and add in any details that you need. I'm going to go ahead and select all. So there is a big list of my contacts there. Uh, so let's get rid of that. So there's that. And then now I can export this or print it however I need to uh, get the information. Um, 
Let's see, there's something else I was going to mention. Oh, the uh, hide controls here. I just did that. When I didn't explain it. So this, this right-hand menu here, you can actually um, hide as well. So if you need to see more of your screen, you can hide that little menu there and then show it again if you need to. All right. So there's contact list. Uh, also, if you have accounts payable and receivable turned on, then you have a aging summary report here, which shows you what do you owe or who owes you and how much and how long. So here's my accounts payable. I still owe somebody $800. So there's my current accounts payable. If I had money that was due in the next 30 days or 60 days, 90 or 90 plus, then that would show me a kind of a breakdown there. So this is helpful for just kind of seeing like an overall snapshot of how much is owed to you and how much you owe other people. You can also add the details in there as well. Uh, and then the last report we have here is the bank reconciliation report. So if you have used Aplos for your bank reconciliations, then once you finish a reconciliation, it will have a printed report here. I don't have any, so it's a bad example, but um, this will show you all the transactions that were cleared in that reconciliation, and then all of the uncleared transactions as well, which shows you a breakdown and a, uh, a nice record keeping list of what was cleared, what wasn't, so that way for your records, you can see what was included on what reconciliation if you need to, okay? So that's reports. So uh, again, any accounting system kind of boils down into three main categories, setting up your accounts, entering transactions with those accounts, and then pulling reports on the transactions and accounts. And reports are really just, it's a, it's a list, it's a, um, it's a document that you put together to answer a question, like how much money do you have, how much money have you gained, stuff like that. So that's reports. All right. Okay. Well, that's really it for today. Just wanted to show you kind of a high level of reports. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's any other area of Applos that you would like help with, feel free to let us know that. We'd be more than happy to help. Our support is free. So uh, thanks for using us and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.